Hello and welcome to this tutorial. This is an introduction to IP addressing and this is part two. So in part one we looked at the anatomy of an IP address and, and bits and bytes and octets. Well there are more aspects of an IP address to look at. So we're going to pick up with this tutorial and look at two more aspects. The first one is a concept and the concept is known as grouping. So we're going to look at groups of addresses. Why do we do it? What are the benefits? And then we're going to move on to looking at two different portions of the IP address. Okay, so let's get started with groups. So when you have a lot of different items of anything, it's always easiest to organize them by putting the items into groups. Now we've done this before, maybe you have a sock drawer and a shirt drawer, and maybe pants go in yet a third drawer. You're grouping these items because when you need to go find them, you can find all of them in one location because they're stored in a group. A pretty simple concept. And we do the same thing with IP addresses. However, when you group a set of IP addresses together, they take on a name, and that name is usually called an IP network or a subnet. You're going to be hearing these terms a lot as we go forward, especially the term subnet. So for now, just think of it as a group of IP addresses. And for the same reason that we might group our clothes together, we group IP addresses together, and that is to make routing and life easier. So not only can we uh, organize our network by grouping IP addresses together, we also make routing, the act of routing, much easier because we can find a group of many items very quickly because they're in a group. It's the same thing, like I said, of going to a drawer and knowing that all of your socks are in that one drawer. Well, maybe in a routing table, by going to this one group of IP addresses, you know you can locate all the members easily within that group. Well, in order to group IP addresses together, they need to have something in common, just like all socks have something in common, namely they're all socks or shirts or whatever the grouping may be. Well, in IP addressing, the thing in common between IP addresses has to do with the different octets of an IP address. So we now know that IP addresses are made up of four different octets, one, two, three, and four. Well, the thing in common that an IP address can have is almost always the first octet. Sometimes it's the first octet and the second octet. So each member of the group, even though the IP address has four octets, they will all have the same first octet, or sometimes the same first and second octet, and then other times, the same first, second, and third octet. Let's go ahead and take a look at this in a diagram, and I think it'll be a bit clearer. So to illustrate this, we have a simple network, a router with two Ethernet interfaces. And we've grouped each of the groups of PCs like so. That's one group, and here's our second group. And so in our top group, we have an address, 192.168.1.0. Okay, and so what we are saying is every member of this group shares the first three octets with all the other members of the group. In other words, their IP addresses will all look the same when you look at the first three octets. And for this group down here, we use a different number, 172.16.0.0. For this group, each member will have the first octet and the second octet the same in their IP address as every other member in the group. So that's how we've chosen to group these two separate groups of PCs. And so we mentioned some benefits on the router. Whenever it needs to get to a PC in either group, it can quickly find uh, the group number and just go ahead and send packets in that direction, knowing that it can find all the different members of the group just by looking at the group number itself. So we get more into that when we talk about routing exclusively, but just keep in mind, by grouping things together, you can find them more easily. Now, 
this leads us into the next portion of the tutorial, which is the different portions of an IP address. Okay? And so each group has what we call a network address, which identifies the group. And so for each of these two groups, this is a network address, and this is a network address. Like we said, each member of the group has these things in common. So these two network addresses represent the entire group. Okay? And now let's dig a little bit deeper into an IP address and see what that means exactly. So let's take this member of the group and let's write out their IP address. 172.16.1.5. So we know the network address is 172.16. That's what every member shares. The next two octets, though, are going to be unique to this PC only. So within this group, this one PC will only use .1.5. That portion, those two octets, are known as the node or the host address portion of an IP address. Okay, so there are two portions of an IP address. There is the network portion and the host portion. Let's take a look at the second PC in that group. And let's see the IP address there is 172.16.1.12. Well, it's the same thing. The first two octets are going to be the network number, identifying what group it belongs to. And then the second two octets, dot one, dot twelve, are going to be unique in identifying that one PC within the group. And that is the host portion of the network IP address. So what we're getting at here is there are two portions of an IP address, the network portion and the host portion. If we look at one more example on the top, let's look at this PC here. Let's say its IP address is 192.168.1.7. Well, up here, the network address or the group address is the first three octets, whereas on the bottom it was just the first two. So the first three are the network portion, and the last one is the host portion, which uniquely identifies this member of the group. Okay, so that's all we're talking about here is grouping PCs, and then the group sharing a number, and then the members of the group while they share a portion of that number in their address, they also have a portion of their address which uniquely identifies them within the group. Okay? It's almost like a group of people all wearing uh, blue t-shirts, but maybe they're wearing different colored pants. So as a group, you can identify them by the color of their t-shirt, but if you wanted to identify a single member within the group, you can identify them by the color of their pants. Okay? Okay, so let's review what we covered. We know that we can group IP addresses together. And when we do that, that group is often referred to as an IP subnet. And we know that there are benefits to grouping. Namely, we get more efficient routing because it's easier to locate members of a group when they're all together. Just like we know we can more easily find all of our socks because we group them together in the same drawer. And then we also talked about the different portions or sections of an IP address. And we now know that there are two portions. There's the network portion and the host portion. The network po portion is common to all group members and it identifies the group. And then the host portion is unique to each member of the group. And that's how we can find the individual members. And so we covered all of these aspects of IP addresses, the grouping and the different portions of the IP address, because groups and network and host portions, these are all key to understanding how IP addresses are ordered into classes of networks. And the concept of classes of networks is what we're going to take a look at in the next tutorial. Okay, so that's it. That is the intro to IP addressing part two. Thanks for watching.